with this announcement of a couple days ago about 700,000 trucks potentially going down to the Texas border setting up shop and uh, doing a convoy down there so that way they could uh, be in support of the Republic of Texas and uh, potentially set up a situation in North America, in America, in the U.S., however you want to say it, um, where, and I've heard Canadian truckers may do this as well, some may do it, this would set up a disaster across the country. So this would be actually something that would be a, a, a huge uh, break in the supply chain, okay? Uh, it would be almost uh, like a collapse of some sorts, okay? And um, a lot of North American individuals don't understand or just don't stop to think how your everyday products arrived at your house, grocery store, shopping mall, whatever that may be. We go... Uh, to those places to get our, our groceries with the expectation that items will be on the shelves and we don't even think twice about it as, as we're checking out, okay? On a larger scale, most people don't think about where the components for everyday products came from or how they got to the factory where they were made even before the, the store to begin with. The same goes for gas at the gas station, um, pharmaceutical locations, pharmacies, cash in ATMs. In so many different situations, the truckers are the ones that get it to the final locations where they uh, end up. Or at some point in time, they touch it for eventually to end up where it would need to in that case. And truck drivers touch every part of every good you consume, whether that's groceries, automobiles, gasoline, clothes, electronics, construction materials, medical supplies. And without truck drivers, or in the case of a nationwide standstill, for example, the one that we are talking about, potentially if it was to happen, hypothetically, if that number was the real number 700,000. A lot of people predict that there would be an immediate impact, which would be felt in just a few hours from, from 700,000 trucks heading down to Texas. And this would develop into a crisis over a few days, and God forbid a week or two or a month or further. Okay? Within 24 hours, medical supplies to hospitals and nursing homes would begin to run short, especially locally down where this would happen. And then, of course, it would spread further. Gas stations will begin to run low on gas as they require sometimes two trucks a day to some locations to refill. Manufacturers will begin to run short on components needed to run their assembly lines. Mail delivery would cease. And within about 48 hours from the incidents, food supplies and stores would begin to dwindle. Gas stations would become increasingly low on fuel, which would obviously, because of the capitalistic society that we live in, uh, skyrocket the prices. And then after about 72 hours from the event taking place, grocery stores would run out of essential things like bread, water, milk, meat, due to the consumer panic and hoarding that would take place as well, because it would be a, a chain reaction. It's not just about the trucks not moving. It would also be what would happen after the fact. Uh, we saw this during uh, the toilet paper incident. This happened in both Canada and the U.S., by the way. Skyrocketing prices in toilet paper. You know, uh, not enough toilet paper on the shelves. Even grocery stores creating these scenarios by not putting out the toilet paper on time on shelves even. And then increasing the prices to $75 a package, for example. Compared to $20 a package, for example. ATM machines and banks would run out of cash and would not be able to complete transactions in that manner. Gas stations, 
like I said, would run out of fuel. Garbage would pile up, would begin to pile up in the streets with no trucks to pick it up if the case was to spread further than just Texas. So if 700,000 trucks stopped and then this spread further. You know, uh, container ships would have to sit idle on the oceans, ocean ports, seaports, whatever you want to call them. So it would be a complete chaotic state if for one month the entire uh, industry was to shut down. Right. I'm talking about the snowball effect. I'm not talking just about 700,000 trucks in Texas, if that was hypothetically to happen. I'm talking the snowball effects of other things that would happen as well. Within one week, all automobile and plane travel companies uh, would cease. Public transportation. People would not be able to go to work, grocery stores, seek medical care. Hospitals would begin to de de deplete their, their oxygen supplies and their other very, very uh, important medical uh, supplies. Within two weeks, clean water would begin to run, run dry. Within four weeks, the clean water supply would be gone, leaving contaminated water for us to use. And of course, only if we were to boil that in any case. This would obviously increase intestinal illnesses. It would weaken the healthcare system. It would be a complete chaotic mess just by that planting of the seed of a truck, a truck not driving down the road. And not one truck. I'm talking large-scale operations if this was to happen in North America. But this came to me to think about this kind of stuff because of the 700,000 trucks that were trying to be organized to get down to the border because of everything that's going on with the migrant scenario down at the border with uh, Texas and Me uh, Mexico. Um, honestly, I, I don't think 700,000 trucks would ever, it would ever get to that point. Um, you would have to get 700,000 truck drivers to agree. Okay, sometimes it's difficult to get 70 drivers to agree Um spread across different fleets or even 70 in one fleet to agree that a scenario situation event or cause is the right thing or the wrong thing to agree on something right so to get 700,000 to say enough is enough and do it in North America the mentality of the truckers is different if this was France and the French decided to come together and, and get to uh, a, a point in time like that, it would probably be a different story. The French like to shut down highways, major arteries, major cities, when they want to demand something from their government or from institutions that run their country. But in North America, I just find that it's just a lot of complaining, unfortunately, not enough action. But if it was to happen, hypothetically, 700,000 were to just go down to Texas and not actually do freight, we would feel it upwards throughout all of USA and Canada, uh, guaranteed. 700,000 trucks is a lot of trucks. That's a lot of trucks that could be out doing loads. We would see a capacity crunch for you that are in the industry, we would see a complete capacity crunch. So this would be a, a chain reaction, snowball event, snowball effect type event where it would just be a runaway scenario with a lot of different industries being impacted. But that's my two cents on that. If you like this video, give it a like. Let me, let me hear your thoughts. What do you think would happen? I'm not the guy with the magic eight ball. I'm just giving my opinion. What do you guys think would happen? If trucks stopped in 24 hours, one week, one month, one year, where would we be as a society? And these type of questions or these type of scenarios need to be something that the governments of our countries, Canada and the U.S. and other countries around the globe think about before they go out and start making regulations and start making rules and laws about all, for, or all points and, and corners of society that we live in. So please, 
if you like this video, give it a like, a subscribe, a share. Subscribe to the the channel content and um, looking forward to the, the discussing with you uh, in this video, but also in future videos in, in, uh, in the near future. I try to post something every single day. So cheers, respect. Ciao.